Welcome to another episode of Wild Satsang with Chris Taylor. This is part two of Sri Ramana Maharshi's 40 Verses on Reality. Verse 11. Ignorance is not knowing the knower. Is it not, rather, ignorance to know all else without knowing oneself, the knower? As soon as one knows the self, which is the substratum of knowledge and ignorance, knowledge and ignorance perish. Author's Comment We know so much in our life, our self, our loved ones, our home, our city, our job, what we like and dislike. We know just about everything. But who we are, really. All that we can know cognitively with our mind are things of senses and feelings, objects, gross and subtle. But existence is not an object. Consciousness is not an object. You are not an object. How can the mind know something that is non-objective? The mind, so to say, rests within the substratum of you. You know the mind. It does not know you. Yet, you can know yourself directly and immediately, even right now. Self-inquiry is a way to know yourself. Practice note. You exist, and you know you exist. Who knows? In your deepest meditation, who knows? Is it the mind, or is it deeper than the mind? When you are happy, who knows? Who is this knower? The unknown knower of all that is known. Who knows this? Who am I? Verse 12. True knowledge is beyond anything known. That alone is true knowledge, which is neither knowledge nor ignorance. What is known is not true knowledge. Since the self shines with nothing else to know or to make known, it alone is knowledge. It is not a void. Authors comment. What is the light of your own consciousness? Does it need another light source to know? Or is it self-effulgent, lit by its own light? That which is seen with this light is true knowledge. Your knowledge of your own existence is true knowledge. In true knowledge, there are no divisions such as ignorance and knowledge. True knowledge is non-dual, without pairs of opposites. What is known by the mind are objects, gross and subtle. The mind does not provide its own light. Rather, it is the same self-effulgent light, which is who you are, that illuminates everything. What is known through the mind is indirect and filtered, and shaped by desires, fears, and conditioning. What is known by the mind always is centered around this I thought, the imaginary character that we assume ourselves to be. This knowledge is all relative with its relationship with this imagined person. This is not true knowledge. True knowledge never changes. It is knowledge of your existence, knowledge of the self. It is self-known. There is no other light. Practice note. You know you exist. By what light? Do you know? What about when you're dreaming? Who is the unknown knower of all that is known? Verse 13. The self is the only reality. The self, which is knowledge, is the only reality. Knowledge of multiplicity is false knowledge. This false knowledge, which is really ignorance, cannot exist apart from the self, which is knowledge reality. The variety of gold ornaments is unreal, 
since none of them can exist without the gold of which they are all made. Author's comment. Even ignorance is lit by self-effulgent consciousness. For ignorance to be ignorance, it must be known. Existence consciousness, bliss, or Satchitananda, is who you are. Is there any possible alternative to your existence? Is there some other reality other than what is real? This is the substratum upon which your ego, others, the world, and your idea of a higher power all exist. Are they other than gold, the substratum itself? Ramana says the self is knowledge. What does he mean by this? Perhaps it is understood better to say the self is consciousness. As you inquire, you see that everything is only consciousness. Consciousness is always there within existence. They are not two, but two names for the same thing. This is your very self, your only existence. Practice note. Inquire. Where does the sense of reality come from? Now, make the same investigation about the sense of reality in your dreams. Who knows the waking state? Who knows the dream state? Verse 14. Find the real I and others perish. If the first person I exists, then the second and third persons, you and he, will also exist. By inquiring into the nature of the I, the I perishes. With it, you and he also perish. The resultant state which shines as ab absolute being is one's own natural state, the self. Author's comment. The ego can only disappear if it is not real. What is real is true always. We all have experiences where the ego is no more. These include our nightly sleep. Also, various internal states, including meditation and samadhi, where the ego just vanishes. If this ego comes and goes, if the ego is not permanent, is it real? Notice that when the ego vanishes, so do all others and the world, as is the case in deep sleep. There is something, though, within us that never disappears. What is that? Ramana calls this the natural state. It is the natural state since it is what it, since it is, what is present when all various ideas, suppositions, and misidentifications fall away. It is natural since there is nothing to do to produce it. Rather, it is what it always remains. Practice note. What is this natural state? Find out for yourself right now. Inquire. Dismiss everything that comes and goes. Everything that had a beginning. Everything that has a cause. What remains? Dive into that. Verse 15. Only the present exists. Only with reference to the present can the past and future exist. They too, while current, are the present. To try to determine the nature of the past and the future while ignoring the present is like trying to count without the unit. Author's comment. When is it? Why, it is now. It is always now. What seems past was once now. What is imagined as future might be now someday. Now is the only time that you exist. All experience, gross or subtle, is now. It is always here too. 
Now and here are when and where you exist. Always. The past and present exist only in your mind. Now is the only direct experience of being. Practice note. Just be here and now. Dismiss any other idea. The doubt, can I do this, is just another idea. Verse 16. Timeless and spaceless are we. Apart from us, where is time and where is space? If we are bodies, we are involved in time and space. But are we? We are one and identical now, then, forever, here, and everywhere. Therefore, we, timeless and spaceless being, alone are. Author's Comment You are here and now, always. Ideas of past and future only exist in the now. Ideas of other places only exist here. These both exist for body minds. Are you a body? Are you a mind? Practice note. Who knows now? What knows here? Who knows the body? What is it that knows the mind. Verse 17. The eye shines as the limitless self. To those who have not realized the self, as well as those who have, the word I refers to the body. But with this difference, that for those who have not realized, the eye is confined to the body whereas those who have realized the self within the body, the eye shines as the limitless self. Author's Comment The body and the world are really part of the same idea. If you see yourself as a body, then the body exists in the world. If you see a world, then the body is within it. But if you see yourself as you truly are, the self, then the body exists within you. The world exists within you. Practice note. Does the world exist without your knowing of it? In deep sleep, does the world exist? When you see the consciousness within, who sees it? Verse 18, the self shines as a substratum of the world. To those who have not realized the self, as well as those who have, who have, the world is real. But to those who have not realized, the truth is adapted to the measure of the world, whereas those who have, truth shines as the formless perfection and the substratum of the world. This is all the difference between them. Author's Comment What you see is true about the world depends on how you see yourself. Without knowing the self, the reality of the world is the reality of body and senses and objects. When you know the self, the reality is in the self. Always there is existence. Always there is consciousness. Nothing exists without these. This is why they are called the substratum of the world. Practice note. What is real? What is always? What just comes and goes? How do you know the world? How do you know your own existence? Verse 19. 
Know the self and be free of destiny. Only those who have no knowledge of the source of a destiny and free will dispute as to which of them prevails. They that know the self as the one source of destiny and free will are free from both. Will they again get entangled in them? Author's Comment Cause and effect are for the body. If you are not a body, what is there to be caused? What effect can touch you? The self is always free, unlimited, and unblemished. Practice Note Did you begin? Your body began. Are you the body? Will you end? Is there a limit to your awareness, your consciousness, that you can locate? Does anything ever touch this consciousness that you are? Verse 20. To see God, know yourself. He who sees God without seeing the self sees only a mental image. They say that he who sees the self sees God. He, who having completely lost the ego, sees the self, has found God, because the self does not exist apart from God. Author's Comment Only the self can see the self. No other exists to see anything. Ignorance does not exist, has no reality. Your self is one. There is no separation, no other. There is no other self anywhere at any time. There is not yourself and the self of God. There is only the self, and you are that. So to see God, you do not need to look afar. Only look deeply within yourself. Practice note. When you inquire into existence, what is your sense of being? Are you many or one without even an idea of one? Are there two selves, one to know another? If you enjoyed this recording and would like to support this work getting out to a wider audience, please consider joining our Patreon, where different tiers allow you to submit personal questions, which will be addressed on one of the upcoming Q&A sessions, one-on-one -on -one chats, or even join one of our camping excursions. Currently, we host the camping excursions of Wild Satsang in Joshua Tree National Park in California. Go check out wildsatsang.org for more. Thank you for listening. Love you.